the focus of today's webinar is about turning your handmade products into recurring revenue. So if you're manufacturing your own products, whether that's artistic prints, maybe it's um, you know bath and body goods, maybe it's snacks, maybe it's something else. We're going to look at how you can take these handmade products, something that you're creating yourself, and turn a turn that into a subscription business and build uh, recurring revenue around your specific product type. Um, on your screen, you should see our our uh, slideshow here. Um, should have a little tile screen with uh, some beeswax candles being made. In the right hand side of the screen, if you're just joining us, there should be a go to webinar control panel. That's where you can ask me questions about the presentation, about any of the subject matter covered today. As we go through it, feel free to ask those questions and we'll devote about 20 minutes, 30 minutes here at the end to cover everything that you guys bring up throughout the presentation. Uh, we'll spend about 20 minutes, 30 minutes on the subject matter itself. And so right around the noon PST, two o'clock central time, we'll, we'll jump into those answering those questions. Okay, so other house, housekeeping items. Um, if you wanna learn more about uh, who we are and the resources we make available for subscription businesses, I encourage you to uh, check out subscriptionschool.com. This is a free blog. It's basically a bunch of guides and walkthroughs on how to run subscription businesses. Now, a lot of this is going to be focused for curated boxes. So these are subscription boxes that use other people's items. Um, but a lot of the information will still be useful for you, um, especially on the customer acquisition, shipping and fulfillment, um, and, and still some stuff around packaging and product development. So, so check this out as an extra resource. If you do have to jump out early today, this webinar is being recorded and you can find it over here in the video section. So if you go to the video section, you'll find this webinar in the next couple of days, uh, including all the other webinars that we've that we've hosted this last month and all, all of our past webinars, um, including some extra cool little videos that we make here at Subscription School about email marketing, uh, a little bit why you know subscribers are better than customers, you know, a lot of different things. We go into branding, customer service stuff. Um, uh, a, a lot of interesting videos, a lot of interesting content on the site, and it's all for free. Um, also, in the future, if you are interested in learning more about subscription businesses, uh, we have a webinar section here, too, where in the next couple of days, you can hop over to the April, and this will all be filled out with all of our upcoming webinars for the month of April. So we usually do about five, six, seven, or eight webinars throughout the month. We won't be holding this specific webinar again for probably about two months. So if you want to learn about customer acquisition in the meantime, or you have, you have other topics that you think are interesting to you, um, check, check out this webinar calendar in the next day or two, uh, and you can... Uh, sign up for future webinars. In addition to Subscription School's blog, uh, definitely check us out on Facebook. So we've got the Subscription School Facebook page. Uh, what's really cool about joining us on Facebook is we also have a group now available. So if you if you go on this page here and you just scroll down a bit, um, you'll find this, this March 17th post. Uh, and it's a Subscription School. It's a private Facebook group. And you can ask to join it. And what, it's, it's full of different subscription business owners, um, it's full of people looking to start subscription businesses, maybe for handmade goods. But if you've got questions and you've got some, you know, you got some ideas you want to bounce off of people, this is a nice closed group where you can do that with other entrepreneurs and everybody there is really supportive of your ideas. You'll have me commenting, the CEO of Great Joy commenting, um, and a few other people from the company in the group that are all, we're all available to be a resource. So, so check out our, our, uh, our blog page, check us out on Facebook, um, you know, of course, we've also got a YouTube. You can follow us on there, too. But basically, I just want to make sure you guys know you've got lots of resources from Subscription School. Um, and uh, if you do have questions, you can always ask us um, via Facebook or via the group. Okay, so let's jump into this. So today, we're going to do a quick overview of what is subscription commerce. You know, why does this work with handmade products or um, it's kind of a small batch, you know, uh, personally made products? products that you make yourself and that you're not sourcing from another company. Um, we're going to talk about how to create a product offering uh, that makes sense with subscription subscription businesses. Also, I'm going to go into a little bit about the logistics and the monthly rhythm of these of these types of businesses. And then I'm going to give you guys some free resources to, to help. So this is me. I'm over there on the left-hand side. These are some projects that I've been involved with. My first real successful business was ConsciousBox. Um, we grew that to tens of, tens of thousands of subscribers. Um, I went on from that to do a couple other boxes. I'm currently working on a box called Prosperly, um, which is interesting for you guys because I use a lot of handmade products. I source a lot of products from people who are makers or artisans. Um, so it's kind of a good example um, of how that kind of looks in the box. 
<coughs> excuse me. And then currently, uh, in addition to Prosper, I'm also working with Creature at Subscription School. So that's a little bit, little bit more about me. If you're interested in learning more about me, you can check out my blog. That's just jesserichardson.com. Um, so when you're thinking about a, a recurring product experience, I think that's really what we're all interested in today, is how do we build a product experience on a monthly basis that continues to be interesting to customers? Um, you know, we want to get away from the single orders that we get through our Etsy store or through our Shopify store. Um, and instead, what we want to do is we want to get people on a recurring basis that every 30 days they get a shipment of these four or five products. Um, the way to approach this whole idea is to approach it um, with, this kind of, with this kind of mindset. You know, do what you do so well that your customers will want to bring, uh, see it again and bring their friends. This is really about uh, creating a really cohesive product experience but also creating a, a product experience that encourages sharing and encourages word of mouth marketing, which is the most powerful form of marketing that you can um, enjoy for your business. Um, so with this kind of mentality in mind, we can uh, kind of talk about what is this and why does this work for us? So subscription boxes. So here's some examples. Um, you know, you, you may or may not have been familiar with subscription boxes and actually I'd like to find that out from you. I'm going to launch a quick poll and so we've, since we've only got a, a few people here, um, I'd love to hear what you guys think. You know, are you familiar with subscription boxes? Is this something that you've, um, you know, that you've, uh, experienced before? Maybe you've signed up for boxes or maybe you've, um, you know, seen them on, on TV or something like that. And I'll, and I'll leave this poll up here for about a minute until we get all these votes in. Um, you should see a big blue box on your screen um, that says, how familiar are you with subscription boxes? And then, you know, there's four options here. Never heard of them. You know, I've seen them before. I've subscribed to them and I've been featured in the box. So I'll give you guys a little bit more time to, to finish this up. All right, just a couple more seconds here. So if you didn't get your vote, vote in, <laughs> now's your chance. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I'll close the poll. So it looks like uh, pretty even. So everybody here has at least heard of them. Um, some people have seen them and some people have subscribed to them. No one's been featured. That's interesting. Um, so, you know, these are all pretty pretty familiar than to you at this point. You know, there's um, you know a whole, whole bunch of boxes here. Um, the, the two that I would draw, draw your attention to is the bottom center. That one is called Handmade Cartel. Uh, this is a good example of what you could do. Uh, this is a box that's all, all products that are manufactured by the people doing the subscription. So they, ma they make the soaps, they make the body lotions, they make the sprays, um, and they just turn that into a subscription business, and they've been really successful with it. Um, the other one I think is interesting um, is the bottom right one. That one's, uh, that one's my box. So if you do want to get some more examples of, you know, some some types of brands or some types of products that work um, in subscription boxes in this kind of, you know, small batch kind of artisan niche, um, you can check out that box. And that, you know, I, I use a lot of local vendors and I, I'm from the Pacific Northwest. So I use a lot of people from Portland and Seattle um, and feature a lot of small local boutique brands that are um, probably not unlike what you're doing in your own operation. Um, so it's still a curated box, um, but it is uh, kind of focused on that small batch, small business niche. So now that we have a sense of what these are, let's talk a little bit more about what is subscription commerce. I mean, it sounds like a buzzword, but it's actually very, very simple. So subscription businesses are just where a customer will pay a fee on a recurring basis and receive a product on a recurring basis. So below this, you can see a life cycle here. The customer engages with you, they subscribe to your subscription, they receive the box, and they go through the cycle of renewing and receiving, and renewing and receiving. At some point in that customer journey, there is a cancellation, and that's the end of the customer relationship. Now, when you compare this to traditional e-commerce, you take out the receive and renew, and it, it's, a, it's a straight shot from engaging to purchasing to canceling. It's not that they're really canceling their order. It's just that they there is no you know, specific set time or uh, rhythm that they'll be in actually rebuying your product and uh, and re-receiving your product. You you very uh, may well have recurring customers um, with an existing business. Ho hopefully you do because that means you make, probably make a great product. But 
um, those people are doing it on their own schedule. So it's a little bit different than the subscription commerce model that inherently has is receiving and renewing of a product offering. So, so why does this work with you guys? Um, there's a couple reasons. I, I point out five here. Um, number one is what I call the niche necessity or the niche necessity. Um, everybody has a niche and you probably already have a niche chosen for your brand. Um, but the best subscription businesses have a very, very definable niche. You know, it's not just a snack box. It's a healthy vegan, you know, gluten-free snack box. It's not just a bath and body product box. It's, you know, um, it's, uh, you know, it's an organic fair trade shea butter bath and body box. It's so you can see how we, there's these general niches, maybe it's around snacks or body products, but the, the best subscription boxes are the ones that really, really drill down on that. And because you already have a product and already have a brand built, you've already drilled down on that. And so you are just, you're already satisfied this niche necessity. Um, and, and for that reason, you're, you're a whole mile ahead of most other business owners in this space. So the, the other reason why is it, is it complements your operations. I mean, really not much is going to be added to your workflow. Basically, all you have to do now is make sure you have, you know, a couple days set aside to do a big production for a big shipment. And then for one or two days, you're actually packing those boxes, uh, packing them with packing material, you know, taping them up, throwing on shipping labels, and then scheduling up a pickup from the USPS or something. So it really complements existing operations. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just getting over a little bit of a cold, so I'm a little bit coffee right now. <coughs> so also because you can do both. I mean, you can integrate this type of business model into an existing business. And you know, there's no reason that you can't still sell your one-time products. It's just a complement to what you're already doing. Okay, so the next one is you already have an asset. Like I said, you're about 50% ahead of others because you have an existing brand, a following, and some brand assets, some pictures, that type of thing. So you're already a couple steps ahead of everybody else in the game, um, which is really important for a lot of reasons. Um, in addition to why this works with your handmade products, is it offers a unique channel. It's a new way to engage with current customers and do some product testing. So, you know, where you might be doing these one-off product testings on your Etsy store, with the subscription box, you can test new things each month. Okay. Um, again, for those of you who just joined us, you know, check out the GoToWebinar control panel on the right side of your screen. That's where you can ask questions to me about what we're talking about throughout the webinar. And uh, at the end of the subject matter is when I will go through those answers and, and answer them for you. Okay, so <clears throat> just clear my throat a little bit. Okay, let's talk about some perks of adding this to uh, adding, you know, recurring revenue via subscription to your existing business model. Um, and there's a couple reasons why this is, this gives you some good perks. So first off, you know, it's stability. It's, uh, it's, more, it's more predictable. Um, by adding a stream of recurring revenue into an existing business model, um, it's going to be easier to monitor and predict your revenue. You're going to see how many subscribers you have. Um, you know, you have a set subscription price. You know, maybe it's $29. So if you have, let's say, <clears throat> you know, 100 customers, at $29, you can expect, you know, that, that $3,000 of recurring revenue each month, which is uh, not only good for, uh, f from a revenue point of view, but it's also good for when you're actually doing your purchasing and your production. So more demand obviously means better purchasing. You know, if you're doing a few hundred sales each month um, on a recurring basis, you know, you can expect uh, to order a certain number of supplies. Uh, like, for example, let's say you're working with beeswax candles or something like that. Um, 
instead of purchasing for you know maybe 100 orders one month you know you purchase in bulk ahead of time for enough for 300 orders because you know you've got 100 customers and you can expect them that they're going to stick around for three four five six months or something like that so by building a recurring customer base you build, build a little bit more predictability in into the uh, materials and the stuff that's required to uh, produce your product which means lower pricing uh, or lower prices for you. you know, bulk purchasing gets you generally better prices, which means better margin for you across the board. Like I said, besides the purchasing, this also helps with production. I mean, it's going to add a lot of focus to your workshop. I've talked to a couple people who ha hand make their own products and now use a, sub a subscription business. And, you know, they've spoken volumes about how it's put them on a new schedule. They've made out of their out of their favorite products, they've actually been able to improve them since they've been making them consistently. Um, also, uh, by setting up an assembly line, it's helped them actually in increase production speed and um, get production times way down. So they're spending a lot less time on making these products and more time marketing them and uh, you know running the business around the actual products. You know, lastly, I think it's really interesting is that. There's a huge community of subscription box people, you know, from reviewers to followers to fans to subscribers. And for you, that's a whole new audience to tap into. Um, you know, it's a very targeted niche. You know, we talked about this niche necessity earlier. In terms of bloggers and consumers, that's their own niche too. I mean, there's a, there's a big group of people who really like subscription boxes because of the idea of subscription boxes alone. So giving yourself a new market to market a product to where, you know, for example, your handmade soaps, you know, might have not made as much sense reaching out to this specific subscription box blogger because, you know, she's in the subscription box niche. So even if you make a great soap, maybe she wouldn't review you because it just doesn't really make sense for her blog followers. By, by adding a subscription to your existing business, you can then tap into that audience. Um, so these are some of the perks. There's obviously some more perks that, that, that can be um, you know built into your business depending on what stage your business is at. Um, but I think from adding the stability of recurring revenue to you know decreasing uh, ingredient cost via better purchasing because of more demand to adding focus and then increasing your, your marketability, especially for new markets, um, you know these are all very compelling reasons why you can add or why you should add. A, a subscription business into an existing in an existing business line. So, um, you know, the first part we talked about what is this and why. So let's talk a little bit about how to actually do this. So the first thing you can do is is find a platform. So obviously today, you know, we're you're you're at a, you're at a Create Choice webinar, so I suggest using suggest using Create Choice uh, platform. On the left hand side, you can see a little screenshot here of what that looks like. So if you want to if you want to start this off here, you can go to start.crazy.com and you can create a store here. Um, it's pretty, super simple. It takes a couple minutes, doesn't require a credit card or anything like that. Um, I suggest going through and doing this to get a good sense of the platform and see how it feels to you. You know, you should check out the designer, customer accounts. Um, see if the, see if it feels comfortable to you. I mean, you want to find a platform that feels good, and um, I, I feel like Creator is a, a very easy platform to use. But whether it's Creator or something else, you know, take a look at it and, and and get a sense of it. Start a free trial and see if it fits with your uh, ability. Um, you know, lastly, you can always extend your trial by tweeting. Uh, Facebooking it, etc. So you can keep a free trial going for quite a while with great joy. Step two is actually thinking about your product offering. So a subscription business can be centered around kind of these two different things: um, a replenishment subscription. So these are like necessities, right? Um, you know, you need soap every month. Well, I mean, at least you, I, I hope you do. Um, but um, you can like set up like a. Uh, like a you know a, a specific product offering and maybe these four items that people get every single month and these are the same items that they can expect each month in their shipment um, and that's really nice because it gives people that replenishment you know it makes it very easy for them to you know stay on top of what 
you know, personal products that they need. The other thing you can do is do this discovery, more of a curated experience. So in this case, you know, this could be something like where each month, it's a whole different set of new products from you. You know, it's the same brand. It's still your brand, but it's maybe maybe one month it's a soap, a body wash, and, a, a, you know, a, a face wash. It's kind of like the clean trio or something like that. The next month it's a lotion, an eye cream, and then a foot rub. And it's kind of like this moisturizing trio. And so you can change it each month and give people that element of surprise and discovery. And um, that can be a really compelling product offering in and of itself. So think about your products and think about what makes the most sense for you. You know, maybe combine them. Maybe there's a staple in your box where every month you get a bar of soap. But in addition to that, you also get these two or three other items. That's a, that's a discovery aspect of it. Or maybe it's the other way around where you get these three permanent items and you get this one item that's a, that's a discovery item each month. So whatever you do when you think about your product offering, you got to really focus on how you're creating those expectations for customers. So subscription businesses really live and die on something that's called churn. And churn is the rate at which people cancel your, their subscription with you. Um, so for example, I think we go in this in the next slide too. But if you have 100 customers and 10 of them cancel, you've got 10% churn. And so in order for your business to grow, you got to get those 10 customers back um, in the form of new customers. And you have to get you know another 10 if you want to actually grow up to 110 subscribers. So churn really stems from expectations and impressions. So by creating a really strong expectations for people um, around what your subscription product is actually going to be is whether well, it's a replenishment or discovery or something like that is really where the lifeblood of your subscription is going to be and where it's going to live is because if people are going to expect these specific items each month, you know, that's where um, you can fulfill that expectation and reduce churn. So, so when thinking about this expectations, here's some, you know, read these points over A, B, C, D, and E. You know, what's the cost? You know, make sure you're getting that, that expectation set clear for customers. It's $30 a month, maybe. What's the value proposition? Is it saving money? Is it discovering new products? Is it convenience because of replenishment? Is it uh, something else? You know, how many items are in each box? What's the approximate monthly value? What types of products should the subscribers expect? And these are all things that you should lay out for customers so they have very clear expectations. Okay. What about a box? First off, you don't have you don't have to use a box. You know, you could use a nailer, you could use a rigid nailer. Um, depends on what types of products you're sending. But generally, when I say a box, I just mean packaging. So, you know, your packaging can play a big role in the experience for the customer. So normally it might not seem as important. Um, I know a lot of people use just USPS standard mailers. Um, you know, I, I don't think that a lot of people either on the Etsy platform or some other, you know, using Shopify or something like that. I, I doubt that many people make them make the point to have custom boxes uh, uh, for their kind of normal shipments. But by doing that with a subscription business, I mean, you really build an experience around this. Um, you know, you can add in your branding, you can add extra call to actions where people are following you on social media or sharing you, or there's contests. Um, you know, by, by doing an extra push for custom packaging, uh, you can really in increase that product experience and uh, importantly, reduce churn. You know, that, that can help with those expectations. You know, by adding in that custom packaging that kind of spells out your value propositions on a printed box, um, that's a great way to make sure your customers are kind of, uh, you know, in line with what they expect. So custom boxes do cost a little bit of money, about $1,000, $1,500 with the plates and dies to make a box in the manufacturer, but there are huge benefits. So number one, you can excite the customers. They, they see the box in their mailbox, they get excited. Um, like I said, you can include call to actions, you know, some specific things to increase engagement. Obviously adds a professional feel, you know, adds a good sense to the experience. Um, it creates a whole new asset for your whole business. So even if you make custom boxes for your subscription business, you can still use those boxes in your normal shipments. So. That's really cool for a couple reasons. Number one is because your normal one-time e-commerce customers get this enhanced experience. Um, and if you buy, you know, a thousand boxes at a time, those boxes are probably going to be cheaper than 
um, you know, going to pick up new cardboard boxes from a box store or something like that. So it creates that new asset. Um, uh, and also inside those boxes for your standard e-commerce customers, you can include those call to actions to set up for your subscription business. So every single time you send out a shipment to e-commerce e customers, you're actually sending out an advertisement. So that's that's really powerful for a lot of ways. So if you're doing a thousand orders a month, you launch your subscription business with a hundred subscribers by sending out a thousand one-time e-commerce sales with a custom box, you might be able to convert a lot of those people to a subscription business. And then obviously, like I said, it improves retention by improving customer experience. Okay, so let's just recap before I go to step four. Step one was investigating a platform. Step two was thinking about the product offering and how you're actually going to pitch that to customers. Step three was thinking about the packaging. Step four is actually getting that audience together. So um, this is really useful for first-time business owners. So some of you may, may not be um, at that stage. You might be at a later stage. Let me ask you, ask you, how many orders do you fulfill a month? So uh, another poll should pop up on your screen here. And uh, I'm interested in learning, you know, what kind of what stage is your Etsy business or your Shopify business at right now, or your, maybe it's a brick and mortar. So I'll leave this up for a couple more seconds and uh, until we get a, a couple more votes in. I mean, the good news here is that um, regardless of what your answer is, um, you know, this is, uh, whether you're at zero or at 100 plus, you're still at a good spot comparative to other people trying to start subscription businesses because like I said, you probably already thought of a brand. You've got some more meat on the bones when launching a business. Okay, I'll leave this up for one more second. It looks like we got most people. Okay, so I'll close this and let me share these results. <clears throat> so most people haven't started yet, um, but we do have, the other half of people are fulfilling, you know, between one and 20, uh, 20 and 50 or 100 plus. So for those of you who are in that one and 20 or one to 100 zone, let's just say, um, so you guys are in a really good spot because you've got uh, you know a decent amount of traction already. Where you know we kind of say internally at Cratejoy, once someone kind of gets that 10, 20 subscriber mark, they're 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 getting successful because at that point you know they're getting you're getting able to cover all the costs of a platform and you know Mailchimp and some other customer service things, and it starts to maybe not make significant revenue for you personally, but the business is running itself at that point. So if you're in that one to a hundred zone, you're in a, a pretty good zone right now um, to, to launch a business like this. For the 50% of you or so who haven't started yet, it's all about you know focusing on this next step, getting an audience together. And even for those of you who are shipping less than a hundred items a month, um, I think this will be useful for you. So the way to launch is, I think, with a few hundred customers. When I launched my last business, I launched with about 150 customers, and you know, by only spending about five hours a week on it, um, I've got that up to a couple hundred customers now. A year later, um, you know, it's it's just a side product. It's it's not really, you know, I have a day job, but by launching with that many customers in the beginning, it gave me the financial flexibility to spend money on marketing, not worry about having to cover any bills out of my own pocket. Um, Traditionally, I suggest people do this through a pre-launch. So this is a static page that collects emails. And I've got an example on the next slide here. I usually suggest getting two to 5,000 different leads. Um, with an existing business, though, it might be easier. So if you are already doing orders, um, for those of you from 1 to 100 or 100 plus, you might already have an existing customer list, an existing email list, you know, existing connections with bloggers or reviewers. Um, and you probably already have existing products to use on a pre-launch page to incentivize people signing up. So you can use those products as a giveaway or you can use them in a, a product shop to attract people's eyes. This is, um, let me show you what this page looks like. This is what a launch page looks like. So this is an example um, for my buddy's launch page. He got about 2,000 emails from this page, maybe, maybe a little bit more. Um, but you can see it's pretty simple. You know, it's just one page, this kind of completed brand, it's a professional looking logo short tagline, um, a one-sentence reason to care, and then a one call to action. So with your with your handmade products, you know, maybe it's um, 
Jesse's Handmade is the brand. Um, you know, it's a short tagline, the best organic, uh, you know, hair care products each month. The reason to care is, um, you know, maybe the, the reason to care is finding good hair care products is really difficult. You can't trust what's on the shelves. We passionately make our hair care in small batches in Portland, Oregon, and ship them right to your doorstep once a month. So that's the reason to care. You know, it's convenient and it's they can trust the brand. And then the call to action, get invited. It's just one field of an email address. If you want to learn more about how to do this, do this pre-launch, head to subscription school. Um, check out the customer acquisition and marketing section and go to this, this article, setting up a pre-launch for your subscription business. Um, I went through really deep detail in this guide with my own business. This is my current business. It's the launch page. Um, I show you guys how to make it some, some, you know, specific tips to keep in mind. Uh, and this is a pretty good walkthrough of how to create something, uh, like this. So, you know, it doesn't need to be, as you can see here, it doesn't need to be super fancy. You can just include a picture of a person or maybe a picture of some of your products or, you know, maybe it's just a picture like this one in the background where it's like, you know, some candles being made in a box. Um, it doesn't have to have a custom box in it. It doesn't have to be fully built out. But by using this and then promoting it through different social networks by, um, you know, pushing it on your Instagram, pushing it on your Facebook, your, your YouTube, your Pinterest, um, and pushing traffic back to this, um, maybe paying for some ads, um, you can build up a strong list of email leads. And when you get a big list of email leads, you can confidently launch. You know, generally, I think that about 10% of your what I call pre-subscribers, these are the emails you get from this page, will actually convert into actual subscribers. So if you had, you know, you know, 2,000 emails, you might get 200 subscribers from that. Um, and so this is a really useful resource for you, um, is to put up a launch page. And even if you have an existing business, um, I might suggest putting up a launch page separate from your existing, you know, URL that you push people to just for lead gen or lead generation. Because when you start to gather those emails, that really gives you a really strong marketable asset um, to launch this business off of. So we've talked a lot about a bunch of stuff today. You know, we went over what subscription commerce is, how it's different from traditional e-commerce. We talked about why it works. Um, we talked about some perks and benefits of doing this. Um, then we went into how to launch it, you know, from choosing a platform to thinking about your product offering to choosing the box to getting an audience together. So we've got a lot of stuff to do today already. Um, so what are you waiting for? Just do it. Um, here's a quick assignment. It's March 23rd. On March 30th, one week from now, I'd love it if you had a product offering decided, you know, a box in your hands. Um, you know everything about your current customer member list. You know where your emails are. You know that you can export emails from, you know, Etsy or Shopify or whatever. Um, you've chosen some products to be included. You know, you bought a $2 box, some packing material, maybe took, took a quick photo of it. Um, and you've taken those emails from Etsy or Shopify or whatever platform you're using, and then you upload them into your MailChimp, or whatever your your email service provider is. Um, MailChimp is the one that I use most. Um, it's a it's a it's just a basic place where you upload emails so you can do email marketing. Um, so with this with this in hand, I mean you're going to be in a really good spot, and you can investigate the next couple steps at Subscription School. What I would suggest going from there would be going to the webinar section. Or excuse me, the video section, and checking out um, how to launch, three steps to launch a subscription box business, and how to get your first 25 subscribers. There's a lot of really good early marketing tips in there that you can check out. Um, okay, so let's do Q&A. Um, so if anybody has any questions about anything we went over today, go ahead and drop some questions into the GoToWebinar control panel, and um, I can go ahead and answer them for you. Um, real quickly, if you're thinking about some questions you might have, I'm going to launch in their poll. So I want to, I want to find out where you guys are selling your product. So I'll leave this up for about 60 seconds. And in that 60 seconds, I'd love for if you guys came up with a couple of questions for me about subscription businesses or anything like that. And then we'll um, answer your questions. Okay. So looks like most people voted. Maybe you guys will a couple more seconds here. Okay, we'll go ahead and close this poll. So we've got a couple more votes in there. So it looks like uh, nobody's using Etsy. Everybody's using their own website or they have a storefront or they're, or they're doing something else. Um, for those of you who chose other, 
in the questions section on the GoToWebinar control panel, can you just post what the uh, the other places you're selling your products? Is it maybe a farmer's market or, um, you know, is it just like kind of like one-off purchases through your friends? If you could post some, some stuff there, I'd love to find out um, a little bit more about how you're selling your products. So, you know, one question we got is how do you – how do you actually push traffic to um, to these launch pages? So um, that's a good question. Um, if you if you're th thinking about how to actually push traffic to these things, um, the number one way that I've pushed traffic to launch pages in the past is through uh, just organic social media efforts. And so I've you know set up my Instagram, and you know on that Instagram I will you know post photos of my products. Um, you know I'll post photos of the box. Um, when I was just doing my launch, I didn't have those photos. Um, you know, I would um, just post kind of lifestyle photos. So maybe a picture of a butterfly on a, on a flower or posted a picture of, you know, someone making a product. Um, and I use those photos to say, hey, this is the kind of the niche um, that, we're, that we're existing in. And check out our, check out our pre-launch campaign, reserve your spot. Um, if you want some examples of that, you know, I encourage you to check out um, the Instagram uh, that, I, that I do for Prosperly. So, you know, this is kind of a good example of how to push people back to a website. So obviously this is a little bit more built out than probably what you guys would uh, be doing early on. Actually, what you could do is go to subscription school and check out this guy here, how I built a subscription business that's made over 50K in six months. And if you scroll down, you will see some examples of my early posts. Okay, so here we go. Um, you can see here, so it's just like some short little snippets, um, some different product shots with some text over it and some call to actions, um, you know, some pictures of, you know, someone reading a book, you know, a mountainside. And then I used under these pictures my captions, you know, they read, you know, um, you know, want your first box free, join, and you could win a free box type of thing. And so I, I use, you know, pretty basic pictures like this, a stew smoothie, you know, stuff that wasn't in my box, but was interesting enough to, to get people to like the picture on Instagram and then go back to my profile and click through and, and hit the website. So that's one great way of doing it. I mean, besides that, you know, setting up a, a, you know, all your social networks, a Facebook page, promoting some posts on your Facebook page isn't a bad idea. Um, you know, like I mentioned earlier, um, uh, because you might already have connections with bloggers or, uh, product reviewers or something like that, or maybe you have some friends who do blogs, you know, using those connections, those existing connections, shouting out your launch page is a great way to push traffic there. Um, uh, besides that, um, you know, I, I think it, I think it's really, um, it's really just a mix of the, that, that organic, that organic push and then maybe doing some paid ads. I like to de-emphasize, um, uh, doing paid advertisements since you want to lean test this idea first and, you know, you, you want to, you know, not spend a lot of money doing this so you can actually see if your your customers would like it. Um, but uh, you could always do that for sure. So um, so so besides that, um, you know, another common question we get here is, um, you know, how how does it how does it work with shipping each month? So uh, this is another good question. Um, so the question is, you know, how do you manage shipping on a monthly basis for a subscription box? So um, you know, currently what you guys are doing is probably one off orders. So you do one order at a time. So maybe you print off a label, you throw it in a box, you drop it in your mailbox, or you give it to your postman. Um, with subscription businesses, it's a little bit different. So number one, given your platform. So for example, if you use Cratejoy, um, you'll go into your um, shipments panel. Um, and there's, this little, there's this little section here for shipments. Um, and they sort everything by batches. And so based on the way that you set up your rebilling schedule and the way that you set up your, uh, your shipping date, they'll, they'll take all of your customers and they'll put them in specific batches for you. So you can export, you know, all 200 orders at once um, and actually buy postage through the CreateJoy platform. So shipping is actually, um, sounds like it's going to be one of the harder operations, but it's actually quite easy um, using CreateJoy. So you'll be able to, you know, download those, those uh, shipments, download those labels, you know, print off all the labels through your label machine, um, uh, and then you know set up a line. You, know, you set up a, a specific box packing line where you have your hundred boxes set up with the packing material. You drop your products in there. You close the box. You tape them. You throw the label on top. You stack them up in the corner of your house, or something like that. Um, 
and then you you, you, get, you call the USPS to schedule a pick a pickup. Um, <coughs> you know, let me know let me know if that's clear to you guys um, about shipping and fulfillment. I know that can be kind of a tricky thing um, for some people to really to figure out. I'm sure you guys are a little bit more crisp on it because of uh, uh, your experience shipping stuff already. But if that's not clear, uh, let me know. Um, okay, so. Um, that's actually the only few questions that we had. If anybody else has any other questions about this, I'll, I'll, I'll leave this for, up for a couple of minutes so you guys can ask me more questions about how this would work for handmade products. Um, you know, our last webinar, we had tons and tons of tons of questions. So if you guys do have any more, um, I definitely encourage you asking them because I know, um, you know, that, that there's a lot of questions around it. So another question just came in actually, are you charging for shipping? So, um, so Maria, I guess there's two answers to this. Number one, uh, for Crate Joy, yeah, Crate Joy will charge you for shipping. Um, now, if, if your question was something else, though, for, for customers, um, for customers, you, yes, you, you can either do two things. You can offer them free shipping. I personally like putting in free shipping in my in my price. So my price is $44 a month and it includes free shipping. Um, and obviously the way that I priced out my subscription box, I included a kind of a, I presumed about a $7 shipping cost um, for my own box. And so it's not really free in the sense that I added it at the price, but I like to advertise it as free shipping. Um, or what you can do is, is not do free shipping and charge customers uh, shipping at checkout. So that's totally, that's totally acceptable. Um, and Crate Joy lets you do both of those options natively. Um, another question is, do you have information on equipment purchases to consider for subscription box businesses? Um, so, uh, and Julie, um, I mean, you can let me know if there's something specific, but there's actually no real equipment that you're going to need. Um, you know, when you think about custom box packaging, you'll be using a, a manufacturing facility that will make that stuff for you. So you actually don't need any equipment at all. The only equipment you might need is a label printer. Um, you know, if you were to use a label printer, I would use a Zebra printer. Um, there's, a, there's a bunch of different models of Zebra printers. Um, uh, let me see if I still have it saved in my uh, LPL uh, 4XL printer. Um, Oh, there it is. This, this was the one that I would suggest. It's pretty cheap. Um, it's about 200 bucks on Amazon here. This Dymo Label Writer 4XL, this thermal label printer. It's, it prints, you know, four by six labels. This is probably the only piece of equipment that you're actually going to need. Um, besides that, um, you know, you don't need anything for the subscription boxes. It's just going to be cardboard boxes, some type of packing material, um, some tape, and a label. So um, that's, the only, that's the only equipment you'll actually need. So, you know, Gracie asks, do you think that knitted products would be a good subscription box? Yeah, totally. Um, Gracie, I think it's an interesting idea. I think it depends on what, what kind of knitted products it is. Um, I could totally see, you know, uh, kind of this like uh, handmade knitted uh, subscription that maybe it's, um, you know, winter hats during the winter months, maybe one month. No, maybe it's just one item a month, right? And so it's a small box. One month you get a, ha a hat. Next month you get a scarf. Um, the next month you get some gloves, um, you know, the next month after that you get a, uh, you know, uh, some, some type of earmuffs or something like that. Um, you know, maybe, um, you know, after that, uh, you know, you have a leg warmers, um, socks, um, you know, I'm sure that you are, you know, an awesome knitter and there's probably, you know, at least I would sit down and try to plot out, you know, 12 months of boxes. So do you have 12 products that you could put in the box each month or not 12 bucks, not, not per 12 products each month, but one product you could put in the box each month for 12 full months. And if you can plot out that schedule, that makes sense for those months, you know, maybe during the summer, you know, maybe it's some type of other product, some other type of knitted thing. Maybe it's, you know, a much lighter yarn and it's a summer scarf or, um, you know, something like that, or maybe it's, you know, a cool, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, like thermos holder, uh, something like that. I don't know. I, I would plot that out. And I think that, um, that would be, uh, a good idea is just plot out all the different types of products that you could use. And then, like I said, I mean, throw up a landing page and test the interest. Um, you know, we have some good examples of what those new products look like and you can, um, and you can, uh, you know, test people's feedback. Um, so another question here is, do you think that there's a market for the consumer to make craft items each month, both adults and children? Yeah, absolutely, Maria. I think doing crafting items each month, little projects for people, you know, maybe it is, um, you know, 
a uh, quarter pound of beeswax, um, some wicks, two little glass mason jars, and a little thing of essential oil. And it's a, it's a kit for them to make their own beeswax candle. I think that'd be really cool. And I think a lot of people will respond well to it. Um, there are some crafting subscription boxes that exist. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but uh, there's only a, f a few of them, so I, I don't think that that market's oversaturated at all. Um, it'd be cool, too, maybe if, like, you know, each month you included the finished product yourself, you know, your product, the way that you did it, and then the supplies for them to do it themselves. Um, so that'd be an interesting idea. I think so. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so it looks like that's all the questions we have today. I, I know we had a pretty small group, so... Um, uh, oh yeah, Gracie, this is also kind of a glamper box with uh, cool plates, curtains, dish towels. That's also a good idea. I mean, the, this, the opportunities for these types of boxes are really endless, and I think the real trick comes in um, testing them through a launch page and asking your existing customers if they like the idea and if they would subscribe to it. Now, one of the things I want to point out to you guys is, is actually um, this really cool um, new calculator um, that Creature just built. Um, which I think is interesting for your purposes. Um, let's see here. Uh, looks like the, the calculator is, is no longer up right now. They may, they may be actually just fixing it. Um, it's kind of lame, sorry, I got you guys' hopes up. But they built a calculator where uh, it shows revenue, um, the difference of revenue between a subscription business and a traditional uh, maker or one-time e-commerce business. And it basically shows the difference between flatline stagnated growth and exponential growth. So um, what I'll do is, I have all you guys' emails and contact information, so once I get that calculator back up, um, and I will, uh, I'll share that with you guys. Um, Gracie says she saw the, the calculator the other day, she's an accountant, and she loved it. So thank you for that little, uh, that little, uh, a good um, little review for us. Once that's back up, they must be doing some type of weird, weird work on it right now. Um, I will, I'll share that with you guys over email, um, and it's totally free. You know, it's just a little calculator to help you guys kind of predict cash flow. So, um, so Selena says this is a good question. So, how can one determine how many soaps to include? Do a survey. So, Selena, I had a friend who launched a soap, soap subscription. And it was uh, like $30 a month for like six bars of soap, and he got like no customers. And to me, that was pretty obvious because like who goes through six bars of soap a month? Like maybe a big family. Um, I think for soap, personally, I think doing a survey would be a great idea. Um, I go through about a bar of soap a month or through some type of body wash one and a half, every one and a half, two months. So – Maybe survey your customers and see what they think would be acceptable. I think one or two bars of soap a month would be probably as much as I would use. That doesn't mean that you couldn't do more, but um, that would be something I would, I would just be cognizant of is just, you know, how much is actually one person going to use each month. And maybe you have two or three different options. It's the one bar, the two bar, and the three bar box. And so, you know, the person can opt into getting more soap bars if they want to um, just through a higher price subscription. Awesome. Well, um, thanks again, guys, for attending. Um, this whole thing's been recorded. Uh, again, sorry for my my uh, my my horse my horse voice, my occasional cough. Um, uh, I will get this this webinar up on subscription school in the next couple of days here, um, and you guys can rewatch it. I'm I'm super grateful for you guys coming out. I think this this what you guys do is uh, really really underserved um, in the subscription niche, and I think there's a lot of opportunity there for people just like you to, uh, you know, jump into subscription commerce and, uh, you know, really make a splash and really, um, you know, I think you guys have the opportunity here to really separate yourself from, you know, the birch boxes and the dollar shave clubs of the world. I mean, you guys make something really incredible. And I think, um, I think that you guys can uh, have a, a lot of opportunity here. Um, Selena asked, will Creature have a launch page? Um, we're currently working on something like that. I'm trying to get them to, to get it completed. Uh, they currently don't, so I would suggest using Launcher Rock or um, or some other type of launch page. Like I said, if you if you check out my guides on Subscription School, you'll get some more options for that. Okay, guys, thanks so much again for attending, and have a great rest of your week. Eager to see your guys' businesses grow. Hopefully, I, I see you guys in the in the Facebook group and on Subscription School's Facebook page. If you have any more questions, you can leave them there. Awesome. Thanks so much. Have a great day.